Come on. Hello, everybody. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different and try to <laughs> stop looking at me and try to tell you everything you could ever possibly want to know about living with dog on a boat. We have dog. <laughs> Jetty here, and she's been living with us on different boats for over five years now. And I think we have a good bit of insight on things we can share with you. So, I hope this helps. You're a good girl. Jetty is a Australian cattle dog. I rescued her in Florida before I met Billy when I still lived in a house with my parents. She had been on boats before, grew up fishing. She would always come out with us and she adapted to moving on a boat very well. And we are very lucky that she is happy as long as she is with us. We have lived on a monohull, 26 foot monohull, a 34 foot trawler, and now a 38 foot sailing catamaran. So she's been on all kinds of different boats and we are so lucky that she traveling with us. With Jetty, we have gone as far north as Nantucket and as far south as Grenada. So we've been to almost 10 different countries with her and tons and tons of different states. So she is a very well-traveled dog. Is living on a boat with a dog for everyone? No, I would definitely say not. Your dog has got to like being on the water and has got to like living on a boat test it out first before you move on a boat take your dog out see if they like it and if they don't have a different plan maybe bribe them a little bit give them some treats when you go out on the boat have them have fun so they enjoy it too one of our most commonly asked questions is where the heck does your dog go to the bathroom when you live on a boat we have a huge backyard we travel to hundreds of different beaches walk in town we're not confined to a boat we're not like out at sea 24 7 we are probably out at sea less than five percent of the entire time so the rest of the time we're anchored and we take her to shore multiple times a day we go for walks in the morning we swim in the afternoon walk again at night and she is perfectly happy going to the bathroom on these walks if we are out at sea if we have to make like an overnight crossing or whatever jetty will go to the bathroom on the trampoline if she has to go the thing that scared me is i'm like counting how many times i go to the bathroom I'm like she hasn't gone to the bathroom at all this must be so uncomfortable for her but we did talk to multiple different vets and they said if they have to go they will go so don't count how many times you go and worry about them. If it's rough, we'll put her life jacket on and walk her up front and let her do her business. Before we got to the point of her going to the bathroom on the trampoline, I tried these fake grass patches. I tried bringing sand on the boat. I tried bringing seaweed that she had gone to the bathroom on the boat to try to get her to go. What I was failing at doing was making her hold it and go. She knew we were gonna go in the morning. She knew we were gonna go in the afternoon. So she's like, why the heck are you putting sand on the bow like that's silly we didn't make her wait so yes tip of the day if your dog has to go to the bathroom they're gonna go what about the times when you have to go out and your dog has to stay on the boat either it's not safe for them to go with you or you're just running in errands where dogs aren't allowed where we leave jetty is in this main cabin area we leave both of the front hatches completely open if it looks like it's gonna rain we'll put towels down and we also have um, baskets that kind of cover the hatches so she knows she's not allowed to get out of them we have two of these camfrau fans that are are on high when she's here alone and we always make sure that she has food and water when we're gone. One thing that we added to our boat are these amazing shades back here and it's pretty much I think it's like a 90% blackout of light and that helps keep the cabin area way cooler. We also have a siren marine system where when we are not on the boat we can open up our app and check the temperature, bilge activity, and all this other fun stuff so we know exactly the temperature of inside the cabin when we are not here and we can make sure it is suitable for jetty when we are gone another thing you have to consider having a dog on a boat is if you are traveling and something comes up and you have to fly back to the states or to a different country what are you going to do with your dog for us jetty is a little funny around strangers so we have yet to bring her on a plane with us we definitely don't want to put her in cargo we'll either take turns if we need to fly back so one of us is here with jetty or we have someone fly in that she is comfortable with and watches her. If you think you're gonna have to fly back and forth a lot, make sure you're either comfortable having your dog on a plane or you have other options available. Living on a boat with a dog does have a few different safety aspects than you would have living in a house. Jetty has a life jacket that she'll wear and it is bright orange fluorescent so if she goes in the water you can see her. 
The one downfall to life jackets is that they are thick and we are in tropical climate so it is hot and Jetty has bright red fur and she gets hot pretty easily. So I'll try to wet it down if she has to wear it and I'll try to keep putting water on it. If it's rough and it's hot outside, she is probably in the cabin and when she's in the cabin she doesn't have to wear the life jacket. So that's kind of where I get away with that hot life jacket issue. But if it's rough and your dog's outside it should definitely be wearing a life jacket. Another safety aspect is medication. So if you are like us and you're traveling to all these different places, you probably don't have a vet that is easy to get to the majority of time. Like now there's not a vet for 20 miles or whatever. So we keep antibiotics and pain meds. We got a prescription from our vet before we left. So we have these extras just in case something happened and Jetty was either sick or she got hurt. We could give her these medications so she's not in pain until we get to a vet. In the Caribbean, there are a few more safety aspects that you have to be aware of. Up in the corner here, I'll have a little clickable link that will show up and it will bring you to an article telling you five things to be aware of when in the Caribbean because down here, they don't have the same regulations that we do in the States, so poison is pretty readily available and distributed on the ground, and you have to be careful of where you allow your dogs. There's stray dogs everywhere and many different other kinds of things. Food. If your dog is on a very specific diet, make sure you have plenty of it because if you're traveling on a boat in the middle of nowhere, you probably won't find that food in most places. I have found that pedigree is pretty easy to find anywhere and luckily for us, that is what Jetty has been on for ages. Keep an eye on your food levels. If you're running out and the next food you have is different, make sure you mix it in with their old food so they don't get sick. Also, it's always smart to have your dog's food if it's dry food in an airtight container because you live on a boat and everything can get wet and it will keep it lasting for as long as you need. So one thing that does get more complicated living on a boat with a dog is traveling because each country has its own requirements for importing an animal. Like I said before, we have done the United States, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadine, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe, Antigua and Barbuda and soon we will be in the British Virgin Islands but all of these countries have different but kind of similar requirements so you have to be super super prepared before you ever even leave the states. I have written everything I know about bringing a dog into all these places in this article right here and if you are interested in that please click it. I put a lot of effort into making it so I hope it can help you. But a few things that I've found that you should definitely get before you leave the states are a microchip and the microchip needs to be implanted before you get your rabies vaccine your rabies vaccine, obviously. A rabies titer test. This is the most time consuming out of all the requirements because you have to get this titer test at least 30 days after you get the rabies shot. So the titer test pretty much tells you how much of that rabies vaccine you have in your dog and that tells these countries that you have an acceptable amount and you are allowed to come in. Other vaccines that you probably don't have just living in the States are a Lyme's disease vaccine and a leptospirosis. I think that's how you say it. Leptospirosis vaccine and the time-consuming part of those vaccines is if you have never had them before they come in two doses you get one vaccine then you have to wait two to three weeks to get the second vaccine so if you're trying to go on a trip last minute and you don't have this first set done then you're gonna get into some trouble because it takes some time one vaccine I have been noticing some countries adding to their requirements is a canine coronavirus vaccine we currently don't have that. When I noticed it was an addition to some of the requirements, I went to a vet in Martinique and I asked for it and he said, we don't have it, I've never heard of it. He said, you might be able to get it in the United States, but he is not sure. We haven't had any issues with countries that require it and have noticed that we don't have it. One thing I would say about bringing your dog into other countries is to do your absolute very, very best to follow all the requirements, but understand that the customs and immigration officials Understand that you're on a boat. So when you see health certificates that are required within 48 hours of your arrival and you are all weather dependent, don't freak out. People understand that. Just describe that you're waiting on weather and a safe opportunity to get there as fast as you can. And be prepared to skip some countries because some countries do have requirements that are so crazy that you probably don't have the time, money, or a mental ability to go through all of those crazy efforts. Have a backup plan. If you wanted to go to a country, you get there and they say, no, you don't follow X, Y, and Z, you're not allowed in, just say, okay, we're gonna sail on. 
or worst case have your dog stay on the boat for a couple days until you have weather that will be able to get you to a new place from the research i've done it sounds like the south pacific a lot of countries have very crazy um requirements so until i find a very good way to do the south pacific we're just going to hang out in the part of the world that is easier to bring a dog to Another question we get asked all the time is do dogs get seasick and for us Jetty only gets seasick when it's very 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 foggy and I think it's because she can't see the horizon but when it's like that she'll throw up once and then she's totally fine. Lucky for us she does not get seasick when it's rough but she does get a little nervous so we just try to make her as comfortable as possible. If your dog gets seasick make sure you talk to your vet because there are seasick medications you can give to your dog to make them more comfortable. So having a dog on a boat can be a little bit more complicated than in a house but there are so many great reasons of having a dog on a boat. My favorite is of course the company. When you're out in the middle of nowhere traveling, you're away from your family and friends, if you're like us, we're with just one other person the whole time, so having a dog to talk to and hang out with all the time is <laughs> amazing and definitely keeps you very good company. Exercise. Having a dog makes you get out and take them for a walk. It gets you walking, it gets them walking, and it gets everybody outside and burning more calories in the sun, enjoying nature, and all of that good stuff. If we didn't have a dog, there's a good chance that we would probably skip our morning walks. Something we didn't really think about until we got into the Caribbean and some of these other countries is that having a dog is also a great alarm and or deterrent for people looking to maybe have a look and see what's inside your boat. We have found that people are generally scared of dogs. When they see a dog, they try to stay far, far away. So that is a great thing to have when you are in countries where being on a boat makes you seem like you have a lot of money even if it's not the nicest boat in the world. I hope this video gave you all the information you could ever need or want about living with a dog and traveling with a dog on a boat. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. We have been living with one for five years, so I think we have a lot of good information to share. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. And if you want to see what living on a boat is like from a dog's perspective, make sure you give Jetty the Gypsy a follow on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.